Good Monday morning, more than likely, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Michael and Benjamin's podcast. I am the one of the two people who are named in the title of the podcast. I am Michael. <laughs> and I am joined today by the man who is known as the Laurel or the Yanny of dated references of Irish podcasting. It's Benjamin. It's Laurel. It, it's Laurel. Ben, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, lives most of his life in a foreign country. Italy. Very good. And apparently the Laurel or Yanni phenomena never reached there. Do you know why that is? Because you are, are dealing with an Anglo-centric mindset, Michael, because you live in a country surrounded by the old English language. I, however, inhabit a country that is, is not at all well, Anglo-centric. Benjamin, well, Benjamin, I would like you to stop casting aspersions on my mindset and realise that... Shut up. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 Do the theme tune. Boom! <gasps> theme music for the podcast. We don't actually have anything music but I hope someone will make some up for us I don't wanna name any names Rachel I hope it's Rachel <laughs> Brilliant, excellent. Um, Benjamin. Yes. We are, um, as they say in podcasting, we are balls deep this week. Uh, no, they don't say that, do they? No. Well, look, we've we're mic deep. We're mic throating. We're, ugh, that's much worse than <laughs> deep what I said. Deep Ben, we are balls deep in the summer lull. Yeah, it's a serious case of... <gasps> uh. Yeah, um, all the all the big movies have come and gone. Uh we we I don't think we're are we expecting it? I suppose Aquaman's the next thing we're waiting for. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for pumpkin spice lattes. Is that a is that a cultural thing? No, but it's a cultural thing in the states. I think I don't I don't know if it's a thing here, Michael. But, but um, look, talking to the microphone. I've never I've never tried I've never this. tried a, a pumpkin spice latte, Michael. Have you, Benjamin? Aren't you somewhat lactose intolerant? I am. That's probably why I've never tried one. Yes. Uh, so you've derailed me there completely <laughs> um, we're in the summer lull um, Ben we're uh, the big movies have come and gone and the TV shows are only just starting to come back they've or, only just begun very good um, well, not necessarily actually coming back there we're, I suppose the first one is going to be Iron Fist next week Iron Fist we can watch that that'll be something to look forward to I'm not going to watch that uh, Benjamin speaking of things <laughs> to look forward to uh, this morning yeah. in our bloody scrambling search for content we watched the trailer for Sabrina the, what's it called? Sabrina uh, The Chilling Adventures The of Chilling Sabrina. Adventures of Sabrina or the, the Terror of I think that's it. Ben, give us some backstory on what that uh, even is. Bloody Bloody Sabrina was a, a TV series with Melissa Joan Hart at one point in, in our lives, yeah. if you recall was correctly. Was it the 90s? That's probably, yes, it was very 90s. Uh, that, that's probably the biggest touchstone for, for our listeners. Um, she, was a, she was only a, a teenage witch, Michael. She was a teenage witch. That's she true. stayed with both her, both her aunts, who were witches in their own right. Mm-hmm. And uh, the problem being that her father and, and her, her mother... And her magical cat... Uh, yes, and her magical cat Salem, who was a highlight of the show throughout. Uh, the reason she lived with both of those uh, aunts is because her father was a killed. wizard. He was killed by Voldemort. He wasn't. He wasn't. That's another magical franchise that came a little bit later. That would be a good crossover, wouldn't it? It would. I, I, don't rule it out, Michael. We are in the season of the crossover. Mm. Season of the witch reference there for anyone who missed right. it. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, as it happens, her father and her mother, um, one was a mortal, Mammy, mm-hmm. and one was a wizard, father, completely forbidden by the magical community oh this sounds like Harry Potter yes racial racial blood mixing ties in there as well mm. um, but it was very interesting um, oddly fascist rule for a Nickelodeon's Viacom TV show I quite liked Aunt Zelda Aunt Zelda was she was a bit alright she was quite attractive there was, was an episode was where right. um, they went to see the violent femmes yes and Aunt Hilda and Aunt Zelda de-aged themselves and she sported a pair of leather the trousers, if I recall correctly. I think you might recall correctly, yes. Ben, because you don't appear to be really deeply searching there. I think that's nope. quite high on top of <laughs> that it. was that was a damn it. We're out of formative experience episodes, but yeah, that would have been that would have been a big one. But anyway, um, I think it was originally an Archie's comic character, um, and Archie has reclaimed it in recent years. It inhabits the uh, she inhabits the same universe as Archie. Josie um, and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats. I don't know any other Predator Archie's stuff. No, no. No, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, the Predator exists in the Archie universe. Oh, that's mad. It's not part, of, but there was a crossover. Yeah, there was a werewolf series with Jughead. Yes. Um, where it was kind of like an alternate dimension version, and Jughead was a werewolf, and Archie became a werewolf hunter, and there were vampires. Yeah. 
It was a whole thing. Punisher met the Archie universe as well. But in recent years, the Archie's comic brand took a bit of a nosedive. And then to rectify that, they started doing all kinds of wacky things with their characters. Yeah. Um, and they sold their rights to CW, who bought it and turned it into a bloody moody teenage murder mystery. A very successful moody a teenage very, murder mystery. very, very successful. But that should give you a rough idea. And in this attempt to rebrand, they turned Sabrina the Teenage Witch into an occult horror series. Yeah. An occult horror series. Ben, were you impressed by the teaser? No. Neither was I. I thought it was very... Generic? Generic. Yeah, just, it was just... Uh, it's, it's something we would make for the podcast, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take that as a compliment for yeah. my cinematography skills. Yeah. No, not you, Michael. Probably probably the thing that I would put up on the, the oh, thing. Okay. Michael actually puts a bit of effort into the videos and things like that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, thanks, man. Um, I'm, I'm far more of a get-her-done kind of guy. Do you, I think the most striking thing was how much the new lead actress, whose name I've since forgotten... She looks like a young Emma Watson. A, a young American Emma Watson, more yeah. importantly. Or uh, Emma Watson. Emma Watson. Oh, Emma Watson. Oh, God, Emma Watson. I would do things to her, man. Oh, Ben. That's not me. That is Chad. <laughs> That's Chad, your American alter ego. Chad, yeah, my American alter ego. Ben, um, I quite like that they've cast someone who is genuinely a teenager. She's she's very young and yes. looks very young. Mm. Um, it is... Uh, yeah, she's very... Yeah, She's young. Yeah. Um, that was a very succinct sentence there for Ben of Michael and Benjamin's podcast. But um, she does look genuinely like a teenager, which is rare. She has that strange phenomenon of having a head that's much bigger than her body. Yes. Lollipop yeah. head syndrome. Lolly, lollipop called. head syndrome. I believe in Ireland we call it a five head because a four head is normal. And then when you <laughs> add one to that, it's five head. She's got a real, uh, to use the parlance of, of the locals, she's got a real five head on her. Benjamin. Yes. This week I have seen two genre films. Two genre films? Both of which I fell asleep during. Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> no, it's not, is it? Uh, I saw Tomb Raider, Ben. It's, yeah, it's all right. Uh, is that with Alicia Vikander? Yes. Vikander? Uh, Vikander? I, I, don't know. I mean, I see what they're doing with the young, real-world Lara Croft version. It's just copying the video games. Ugh. Well, the, the I mean, reboot. not copying. That's, I mean, it's a multimedia franchise, isn't it? So it's a more of a strategy than just flat out copying. Mm. Yeah. But I wasn't impressed by it, Ben, to be honest with you. Why? I found it quite dull. Tell me more. Um, the opening 30 minutes almost are setting up the character of Lara Croft. Mm. And they do it with a bicycle chase through London. Oh, no. A real low stakes bicycle chase. And oh, then no. it's a good bloody 40 minutes, I reckon, before any, any sort of peril happens don't like and that yeah I'd all, I was already bored um, and I Ben I'm quite a Tomb Raider fan oh are you yeah I didn't I, know this I was a I, I, I was a Sega Saturn gamer in my, no. in my teenage years oh yeah and uh, Tomb Raider was one of my favourite ever video games but I like Lara as an adult saucy minx she was a bit of a saucy minx. And I'm not saying all female characters should be adult saucy minxes. But Laura Croft should. Lara Croft. Lara, sorry, Lara Croft Don't let the Americans get you with their pronunciation. Her yeah. name is Lara. Not Laura. It would make more sense given that she's of British heritage that it would be Laura though. Well, she is of British heritage and she was created by British people and her name is Lara. Weird. Yeah, that's how it goes. Speaking of things I fell asleep during, I also fell asleep during Hereditary. The horror film, mm. the one that Reddit's going mad about, saying yes. it's the best horror film of the last 20 years, Michael. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael, did you fall asleep because you were a bit tired, or did you fall asleep <laughs> because it was a terrible film? Ben, it's very hard to tell, <laughs> let's be honest. I've been tired this week. I'm you almost had a, 36. You've had a tough week, Michael. I've had a tough week, Ben. I was at a stag. You, yeah. Uh, I'm very tired now, but Hereditary did not catch my attention the way... I had heard that it was a revelation in horror films, and... Ben, I watch a lot of horror. You do. And Hereditary was certainly a capable horror film. The, the The most exciting thing for me was that one of the characters in it was one of the main characters from uh, the TV show that I really enjoyed, The Leftovers. Oh, yeah. crossover So I really enjoyed that. And Gabriel Byrne was in it. Gabriel Byrne, Mr. Gabriel Byrne. That's the fella. Oh, very good. Um, but I did not really enjoy it, and I thought that it went a bit off the rails and a bit weird. Now you listen here, young man. That was a fantastic film. It took a lot of effort from a lot of good people. Gabriel Byrne did not put that much en much energy into his performance. You have put more energy into your performance there than I think he did. I think he felt he was in a B movie for a paycheck, and he had no idea that it was actually going a to real be quite effort. a thing. Yeah, it was. A, I, I felt he was one of the weakest parts of the film. But right. yeah, two films this week. 
didn't really enjoy either of them. Okay, which was disappointing. Both damn squibs. Let us know down below if you thought Hereditary was a revelation or a bit of a snooze fest. And let us know down below if it's Laura or Lara. It's definitely it's Lara, Lara. But I Lara. just I just don't want to let go of it, Lara ladies and Croft gentlemen. Of Croft Manor. If anyone wants to give me a little little help down below. Lara Croft's dad is played by um, noted character actor uh, from The Wire, whose name I forget. He's English, but sometimes... Dominic he's... Cooper. That's... No. No, Dominic... West? Dominic West? No. Fred, Fred West? No, it's not Fred West. It's no, Dominic he's a, something. He's a murderer. It's Dominic something. Hang on. You go on. You go, go on. on. Well, you, actually, you go on. Benjamin, speaking of teenage witches, we'll fix this in the edit, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> speaking of teenage witches, Norman Reedus is 49. It is Dominic West. It well, is well, Dominic well. West. Norman Reedus is 49 years old. I did not think that. I did not think that at all. Yeah, he's Congratulations 40. to Norman Reedus. Look, Ben. Long hair goes a long way to hiding a man's age. Do you think? Yes. Reckon? Yeah. Do you reckon? Yeah. He's the physique of a much younger man as well. Well, I've never seen him in the nude. Nor have I, but I would reckon that he has the physique of a much younger man. He's got long hair and he they dress him young in... Um, and 49 is the new 30. He's also playing someone's kid brother in the series. Like yeah. His character is very much a coming of age character. That's or... interesting actually, because Walking Dead is going, what, 10 years now? Uh, he's not a coming of age character anymore, but when he was originally introduced with good old Michael Rooker, yeah, um, good old Michael Rooker was the big domineering big brother. Kind of him. Like I, I had always thought that he was about twenty five, yeah, twenty six. So you would have thought he was twenty five. I would start have thought he was show, about maybe thirty five, thirty six now. Forty. He was forty when he was playing the younger brother. If my age here is right, maybe I'm wrong. We're gonna to have to check that because it's yeah. I'm gonna check it that. It seems while, a little incredulous. I'm gonna check that while you tell us what character you think would best suit him if he was to make a, a comic book film. Uh, Michael, he'd probably suit one of the kind of the rough riders, one of the the outlawish characters. He'd definitely be an anti-hero. Yeah, born in 1969. That's fucking mental. Um, first curse of the podcast. Whoop whoop. Um, but yeah, that's a bit mad. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to waste time here and do a bunch of guesses because now I can only associate him with the person that he's voiced and uh, an interest in playing, and that's uh, Ghost Rider. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> was that the Ghost Rider? <laughs> that was the Ghost Rider on his little tricycle. Um, a Ghost Rider. I'd be I'd be well interested in seeing him. I would like to see him play the traditional Ghost Rider, not the Johnny new Blaise. car Ghost Rider. Well, the new Danny. The... No, Danny Ketch was the second Ghost Rider. The okay. new one I who drives remember. the car I can't remember is of of Mexican descent or Latino descent. He's Latino for sure. I can't remember. Um, and he drives a souped up hot rod. But, Ben, he is in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He is, but so is Johnny Blaze. Well, now, I assume that you have only seen this on YouTube. I have. Whereas I have watched the entire series. Fair enough. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the origin story of the Ghost Rider, whose name I've forgotten. We really should know the name of that character, Ben. We do a the whole original. podcast. No, the, the guy. The, the guy with the car. The car guy. Yeah. Um, we should know that, because we do a podcast about comics and stuff. That's the type of thing that people might expect us to know. Does that mean people know. expect us to know things before so, we go on eh? Anyway, look, that's very obvious padding. <laughs> uh, he has a car crash. In the comic books, he's a teen. But in the thing, he's like 30. He's very teen. In the he comic has movie. a car crash, Ben. R- Robbie Reyes. By Robbie way. Reyes. God Robbie Reyes. damn it. And he's played by Gabriel Luna. I think every single Latino character has a Reyes in their name somewhere. Well, it's a very common name. It's like calling an Anglo-Saxon character John Smith. Or Um, an Irish character Danny Murphy. Yeah. Mm. So, Ben, he has a car crash. Yes. And he's out for vengeance. Yes. And then a ghost rider appears and passes the curse on to him. It's never specifically stated that it's Johnny Blaze. Okay. It looks like Johnny Blaze. It sounds like Johnny Blaze. I don't think it speaks. There's a clinking chain though, isn't there? Yeah. It looks like Johnny Blaze. It looks like the Johnny Blaze, the the Nick Cage Johnny Blaze. But they never say it. So in the Marvel Universe, there could be a big gang of Ghost Riders. Well, there, there technically is in the comic books because Robbie Reyes is not possessed by the traditional spirit of vengeance. I don't know what he's possessed by now. No, he he inhabits the body with a serial killer's ghost that escaped from hell. Is that still what gives him powers? I think Fair point. Because he's in the current Fair run point. of the Avengers, and I think he might be a traditional ghost rider. He might be now the spirit of vengeance in yeah. general. Because, because that was a weird thing they did, because they didn't want to give up Johnny Blaze just yet. Yeah. Where they were like, oh, well, it's not... It ha- he has a name in the comics, I think it's Xanados or... Z- Xanathos. Xanath- Zarathos. Zarathos. Something like that. It begins with a Z and it ends with an O's. Mm. Um... Anyway, old Zosi um, is the traditional spirit of vengeance he's given to... Just watch your levels a bit there, Ben. He's... 
You're alright. You're alright. Keep going. Okay. Um, he's given those powers from Mephisto. He's given those powers from Mephisto. Uh, the best thing about Mephisto is his name has Fisto. It is. That's pretty much the only reason we still watch him. He's been decrowned as, as King of Hell. Has he? Yes. By whom? Right. We're gonna, yeah, gold. we're gonna have to we're stop. Just, we're just <laughs> have to gold. Anyway, I think Norman Reedus would make a fine Johnny Blaze. I think he would make a better Johnny Blaze than Nicolas Cage. Although I would be very disappointed if he didn't point his finger all crooked and say, "I'm gonna take this curse <laughs> and own it." You, I enjoyed that every time. Very good. You did this to me. Then last week we talked about things ending. We did. And one of the things that is ending... No, that was two weeks ago. Yeah. Last week we talked about the Pope. We did. Um, and we got Pope. lots of new Christian followers who seem to have missed the point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Christian people use a lot of bots on Instagram. As yes, they do. Yes. Benjamin. Um, not all Christians. Not all Christians, but a lot of them. A lot of the, a lot of the, the ones that use it as a business tool seem yeah. to... Uh... Benjamin, you told us that Adventure Time was coming to an end. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, so Adventure Time is heading into its penultimate episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, sorry. Penultimate is final, isn't it? Second last. Second last, sorry. It's, it's had its penultimate episode. It's now heading towards its finale. It's ultimate um, episode. It's ultimate episode. The final one of the entire series. It's lasted for quite a while. A lot longer than the original creator, Pendleton Ward, intended it to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. It seems to have remained one of the strongest, most tri- uh, most loved mm-hmm. uh, fan bases in a very, 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 very long time. That. Ben, it wouldn't be traditionally animated, would it? It's uh, it's computer animated. It's a flash sure. animated, and it comes from the Cal Art style, is oh. what it's, it's referenced to. And it is widely credited for making, uh, well, for causing the wave of slightly generic animation to come out of Cartoon Network in the last couple of years, including Rick and Morty. Including Rick and Morty, uh, a regular show okay. as well. Um, it it was kind of the thing that propelled people towards flash animation and mm. made it such a wide stream use. What's Cartoon ca- Network ca- squares Cal- by it? Fagan? Cal Arts. Like Cal California Arts, arts? like uh, Caltech, yeah, Caltech, oh. Cal Arts Department, um, and it's all the flash animation stuff, which replaces the traditional cell animation hmm. used by animation studios like Disney. Um, well, Disney haven't bloody painted on cells for a for long a long time, time. but there's two styles were kind of or, distinguished between these two things, or Boulder Media, or Boulder, or Boulder Media. Who Boulder does... Media are an Irish company. They do Danger Mouse and some of the My Little Pony stuff. Oh, excellent. Uh, we met them at Comic Con, and they gave us pencils. That was very nice of them. Yeah. You have one in front of you there. I do. Mother. I'm using it for the podcast. Yes. So thanks, Boulder Media. Thanks for those pencils. Thanks very much. Um, if you'd like to animate us and give us two little animated things we can use, that'd be <laughs> great. Um, that'd make my dreams come true and I could quit the podcast a happy man. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, um, I think one of the most interesting things about Adventure Time is the giant amount of lore that it's amassed over its time. Mm-hmm. Um, like there's a whole elemental sequence. I, you know, there's there's a bunch of different races. They're all tied into each other. But I think one of the things I enjoy most about Adventure Time is how everyone goes, oh, it's been planned like this from the start. You know, it's been this grand narrative from the start. <laughs> and even people like Pendleton Moore have gone, I'm surprised we made it past season one. Uh, and is, I, is Pendleton Ward his real name? Pendleton Ward is his actual name. Oh, that's interesting, um, isn't it? Yes, he is. He's probably if you were to look at Pendleton Ward. Yeah, he is the epitome of a neckbeard. Mm. Um, and quite socially awkward in general. But he'll tell you that himself. That's not me casting aspersions on his character. He if I ever read the word epitome, it always reads in my head, head as epitome. Epitome. Yeah. Mm. It's one of those I used words. to think that was something you put on someone's gravestone. An epitome. An epitome. That makes sense. Yeah. An epitome. It sounds like a book that you could use to administer adrenaline if you've had an allergic oh, reaction. Oh, I could have used that <laughs> once upon a time. But anyway, that's a story for a different podcast. Um, but yeah, it, kind of interesting that the lore that's built up and, and how the fan base is like, oh, he's a genius, he put all this together. And I think Pendleton Ward would be one of the, the first people to kind of say, nope, mm-hmm. I'm just really happy it's gone this far and I really enjoy telling this long, twisty story and it works really well um he's tried that kind of epic storytelling before and mm-hmm. it's failed horribly he did do a series for a youtube channel called cartoon hangover oh was which, that him yeah which was a hangover from federator studios so he did um what was it called I don't know ben. about a bunch of teens on mars they were looking teens for on parents. mars no it's not it wasn't called teens the on tv mars. show life on mars uh no it wasn't oh. that either that was neither animated nor about teens. No, neither of those things. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he did a series for Cartoon Hangover on thing, and it didn't do as well. Oh, that's didn't a shame. Do as well. But anyway, the ultimate episode is coming up. Um, I think a lot of people will be sad to see it go. I mm-hmm. think a lot of new up and coming animators will breathe a sigh of relief because it won't be the only thing commissioned by Cartoon Network anymore. <laughs> um, 
but it did have a massive influence on a lot of things. I think Adventure Time was the first cartoon that kind of blocked the way, coming out of that awkward 2000s phase where we were trying everything and seeing what stuck. Mm-hmm. And then you could have a far more vulnerable, creative kind of cartoon character like Finn the Human, mm-hmm. who is quite a vulnerable person and really is just a boy going through his... His great hair, though. Adolescent. Mag magnificent hair but it really is a guy just navigating his his growing up it's a coming of age tale with with monsters and dragons and ice kings and and whatnot Mm. um but i think a lot of shows like steven universe regular show um all of these rick and morty rick and morty gravity falls to a degree gravity falls to a degree absolutely they all kind of owe um gravity falls would have been the first attempt that disney had at mimicking the success of cartoon hangovers Mm. or not cartoon hangovers cartoon network's current run very good. Ben, um, speaking of formative experiences, tell us what happened the other day that made us both smile. Oh. So, go on, Michael, ben. as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm want to go and buy a comic book on yes. occasion. Yeah. Um, and I was, Justice League. I was in one of our local comic book shops. Go on. Taking a look at the two new Justice League issues that I wanted to pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ben, you feel, just to interrupt this story here and yes. add a bit of depth and colour to it. Yeah, why not? You feel no urge to buy a comic book when it comes out. Not necessarily. No, you're more than happy to wait a couple of weeks and then buy them in sets. I like installments. I you're, like I like to to tear through. You're a weird egg. I am. I'm an odd egg. But so you'll wait and let a couple of issues build up and buy them. Oh, I enjoy rather those. than just waiting the extra couple of weeks and getting a graphic and novel. Mm, I would love to do that, and I have n- I have not, as you know, I have not bought a comic book run in a very long time. Mm-hmm. And the reason that I am currently buying this one is because I'm a massive fan of Jorge Jimenez's artwork mm-hmm. i think it's some of the cleanest most dynamic consistent work that i've seen come out of like a line. modern brian hitch uh yeah like a modern like a, brian hitch but like i would say modern jim lee even more technically talented than both of those men not combined though uh not combined no they probably have a fair crack at him combined yeah. but jim he's, hitch he's a phenomenally talented man you'd also probably appreciate him he's a very physically intimidating man i've seen Michael. him on on uh, instagram i'd like to fight him he's a big man yeah. he's a big man he, he is as far as i know uh, a brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner is he so you could have a little scrappy scrap oh that'll be nice we'll, we'll have a chat with him on i on... would like to set up a new series ben called mick fights comic creators um i think we should just set up a series called mick fights people who write in from the podcast and want to fight <laughs> mick um, i'm totally okay with that i'll commentate on every single one of them very good um, but I was in buying oh yeah I forgot what uh, we were doing Justice here. League 5 and 6 um, and while I was standing in the line uh, a young a young man a, a young, young man. comic book fan a local comic book fan a local comic book fan of Irish descent assumedly did he have a ginger beard came in he didn't he had uh, black hair as I recall and a pair of spectacles sounds handsome um, he was very handsome um, and he came in and he said do you have the bog road and the man behind the counter said yeah it's there on the shelf behind you um, and then he said yeah yeah I was, I was uh, chatting about it and then the man behind the counter gave him the little spiel you know mm-hmm. self published and blah 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 and he said yeah I heard about it on a on a podcast. Yes, go on. Called um, Michael and Benjamin's Podcast. That's our podcast, Ben. That's our podcast. And I swear to God, I was behind him in the line and I had a giant goofy grin. So this is, assumedly then, when you said hello and introduced yourself and uh, said, nice to meet you. That's actually me. No, if if the young man had <laughs> turned around, he probably would have seen a man who looked slightly mentally ill <laughs> <laughs> standing behind him <laughs> holding two issues of Justice League. <laughs> So I'm sorry, I bottled I bottled the intro. Um and yeah, just to the guy, if you are listening, uh we really appreciated you mentioning us in real life. <laughs> I was there, I was right behind you. Um sorry if I made you physically uncomfortable with the heavy, <laughs> with the heavy breathing. <laughs> but I was there anyway, and uh, we really appreciate the show. He was giving you two thumbs up. He was giving me two thumbs head. up in his head. He probably didn't think I looked as weird as I do. Um but anyway, uh Look, it was just a really nice moment for me personally, Michael. And I put it straight in a little WhatsApp group that we have with some friends of the podcast. You did. And uh, we had our a WhatsApp group aptly named Ben Podcast Friends. Yeah, Podcast Friends. Um, and it was just a really nice moment for us. Benjamin. Well, yeah. Speaking of you doing something mental. Yeah. It's time for the return of an old segment. <gasps> Ben's Retractions. It's Ben's Retractions, ladies it's and gentlemen. Ben's Retractions. Uh, I might put the old theme music back in there. Go on, shove it, it in there. Ben, he got something wrong. And now he's gonna admit that he got it wrong. It's Ben's retractions. Ben's retractions. Whoa. 
I go on. Yep. Um, <laughs> that was a good space now for the edit for the, the clean. People, the people who are listening, I probably didn't vent. There's probably just a little moment of silence. That, that's all right as well, though. It's that's pretty all right late as well, though. It's pretty late on a Sunday when we're recording this. Yeah, we're fairly knackered. As I mentioned, Ben, I've been on a stag. You've been on a stag, and he looks every ounce the man who's been on a stag. Not my stag. Uh, not his stag. Not his stag. His good lady friend is still managing to slip the noose of being stuck with Michael forever. <laughs> You're a real um. son of a bitch. <laughs> Anyway, do your retraction. Oh, I was delighted. Oh. Sorry, he gets to make fun of me for having to do a retraction. I get to make fun of him and his status as a man. Um, so yeah, uh, Brent's retractions is due to a little mis- mishap on my end. A slip for of the, the tongue. A slip of the tongue for the Pope podcast. Um, I said that the man who came up with the theory of disenchantment, the philosopher who came up with the theory of disenchantment, was Carl Weber. Yeah, it is in fact. Max Weber. Yes, it, you were thinking of Carl Weathers. Yes, I was thinking of Carl Weathers from films. Noted character actor, yes. Carl Weathers. So Ben, your um, your slip of the tongue has inspired a combination of two things: your slip of the tongue and the fact that I spent eight hours traveling in a car with my friends this weekend Oof. has inspired the episode. Because as we were traveling, we were talking about the best films of actors. Mm. And I thought, you know, the the world would probably enjoy something like that. To, I thought that to myself, Ben. And I thought, however, we do a pop culture podcast. Yes. No, not really. We can't. Look, it would be madness. It would be folly for us to talk about the best film of Jack Sheer Nicholson. Sheer folly. Sheer folly. Sheer folly. Although the best film of Jack Nicholson is, uh, for us, would have to be Batman. Bad, because 1989. It's, because it's, 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 Ben, it's, it's right up our alley. It's the definitive joker. So before, let, well, let, let's get us bloody going here, Ben. Best film of Carl Weathers. Best film of Carl Weathers. I mean, I'm... I'll never, I'll never get over Apollo Creed. Mm. But the first place I was introduced to Mr. Carl Weathers was Bloody Happy Gilmore. Oh, Ben. Yeah. You boomer. And I, no, I, boomer. I, I had you? a weird reference that I didn't realize, possibly subconscious at the start of this podcast. Go on. The thing that is most synonymous with Carl Weathers in my mind is him playing the piano in Happy Gilmore's Happy Place, singing, We'd only just begun. I have never seen Happy Gilmore. To live. Oh, you're missing out. Yeah, well, I'm I'm missing out on what that might be a very good reference. White but... lace and promises. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I know him from. But then I, I came to find his work much later. Um, I know him as Apollo Creed mm. um, in Bloody Rocky, and then more importantly, I know him as Bloody Predator fodder. <laughs> yes. Um, a little bit later. So, so those, are, those are the two films that I know him ben, from. Ben, just let's set down a ground rule for this, right? Yes. It is not. The actor's best performance. That's not what we're talking about. No, their best film. We're, but we're talking about the best film that they're in. So, for example, Carl Weathers is in Rocky Four for a few minutes. Yes. But that's still eligible. And the fact that he's only in it for a few minutes doesn't... Does not negate the fact that it could be his best film. It could be his best film. It's yeah. the best film that he is in. Yeah. And in the case of Carl Weathers, that's Predator. Yeah, it's got to be Predator, isn't it? Rocky Four is iconic, Ben. Yes. But it would be hard to argue that it's a good film. Very. Because, Ben, can we say that it's not a good film? I'll let you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a million, Ben. That's really great. Um, Predator, Ben, is a true classic, though. Yeah. You, you can watch Predator now, and it's as fresh as the day it was made. Come on, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Over here. Get to the chopper. Go. Very Go. Good. Yeah. What else is there? I don't got time to bleed. <laughs> uh, which is, I still say that to this very day, Ben. I really enjoy that Arnold Schwarzenegger was his very own exposition. He can't see me when I'm covered in mud. Does he say that? No, he says I can't, he can't see me. He covers himself in a little bit of mud. A lot of like, mud. He can't see me. Does he? Yeah. I don't remember him speaking to himself. I thought that was was. delivered dialogue free. He has a little chat to himself. I thought that after everyone else was killed, that was the end of the dialogue. No, he has a little chat to himself. Other than like, you ugly son of a bitch. Yeah, there's there's everyone, everyone, die you son of a bitch. Um, Every once in a while, there's a little little whisper. Well, you know, you have to do that. That's how you keep yourself sane. So that's what we're going to do this week. Carl Weathers Predator. We're going to talk very briefly about the best uh, genre film. It has to be a genre film. Yes. So we're going to talk about the best genre film of noted genre actors. Fair enough. Shall we start with the man with the largest... He doesn't have the largest head that I've ever seen. Uh, a man with a, a notably large head, Ben Affleck. Oh, we're going to Ben Affleck first. Yeah. Oh, damn it, you've messed up the running order. I've, I've thrown you a loop there, Ben. 
Oh, God, you're a monster. Trying to catch up there, Ben. Uh, no, I haven't now. I haven't now. No, let's not worry. Uh, inarguably for me, Michael, it's, it's, it's a crime film, uh, Town by Night. Town by Night? Is that no, not just Town by Night? It's a town. Uh, no, Live by Night. Live by Night. I... Live by night. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. <laughs> that's that's a noted flop from Ben Affleck after he had his career resurgence, Michael. Oh, um, yeah. I was, I was being I was being clever. Oh, okay. Um, I was being clever, and I I fucked it up because I, I got the name wrong. Yeah, because he's in a film called The, the Town, Town and which that's is actually quite good. Quite possibly his best film. Um, I wouldn't say that. It's also not a genre film, so it doesn't count. It's a crime film. Sure. Do we do? Are we covering crime films? Are we just doing genre films in our purview? I I would have thought so. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I take it back then. Well, I mean, we could. No, it's fine. We really should have had a production we meeting before this. this out, yeah. <laughs> ben, <So> look, <laughs> I'm going to give you some options, right? And then you make a face at me because making a face at me will be like podcast gold. People will really know. Yeah, because it's a visual medium. Yeah, think. exactly. Yeah. So, um, uh, Batman versus Superman. <laughs> so make vomit sounds into the mic. <laughs> So you don't think Batman vs Superman is Ben Affleck's finest genre work? <laughs> right, yeah, you're gonna stick with that. So, <laughs> no, I'm, uh, not, I'm sorry to any listeners. What about <laughs> what about Dogma? Nah, no, no he's good. just a moody Ben Affleck prick. Ben Affleck in that one for me is very much playing what people thought Ben Affleck was like. Well, he plays Ben Affleck. Yeah, in most things. No, he in 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 Dogma. He oh no, he doesn't play Ben Affleck in Dogma. He plays Ben Affleck in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. He literally plays Ben yeah. Affleck. He literally plays. And ben that's Affleck. a great cameo. It is. But he plays the angel in Dogma. He does. Bart. Bartleby. Bartleby. Is he Bartleby? Or is Matt Damon Bartleby? I think he. I think he's. No, he's Bartleby, isn't he? I've forgotten now. Look, we're going to watch it again. Yeah, well, for the, the episode oh, in the future. Uh, but anyway, uh, not his best not film. Not Dogma. No, okay. no, no. What no, about no, Ben? No, no. What about uh, Justice League? You thoroughly enjoyed that, didn't you? I hated Justice League. I hate his portrayal of Batman. I think he's a really weird, insecure Batman. I right. Think he's an oddly small, petty man. I don't think he's not my Batman. He's not your Batman. He's not my Batman. Michael Keaton is my Batman. Michael Keaton, and he is, is considerably smaller than Ben Affleck. Yeah. Michael Keaton is my no. I would say the first Batman I was I was I won't say exposed to because Batman kind of beats up those kinds of people who expose themselves to children. Very good. But um, I would say it's it's got to be Kevin Conroy for me. Animated Batman mm. is probably my first Batman. Then shortly after that, Adam West Batman because my grandfather heard that I like Batman and uh, saw that it was on to Adam West. Saw that it was on TG Car and would film it for me on a Saturday. Was in TG Car. TG Car is an Irish an Irish language television channel mm-hmm. here in Ireland on TG Carr was it dubbed in Irish? nope <laughs> that would have been great this is a strange thing about TG Carr TG Carr used to get the rights to TV shows and use them to draw people in mm. so they'd have one little English so they'd draw them in with a bit of English yeah they had Justice League Osquelga the cartoon did they? yeah they, they had, had Justice League Osquelga oh. uh, here's Batman Ray Ray Nish. <laughs> which is my god Batman run yeah, run they, they had um they had uh, Power Rangers in space. They did. In it's Irish. the I, I'm still not sure if it was the Sposs. Power yeah. Rangers. Suspos. Neil Aaron Flanade. <laughs> <laughs> that's no on the planet, by the way. It's yeah, not with Aaron Flanade. Yeah, yeah, very, Looking very good cod Irish there. Uh, one day, one day we might actually do an Irish podcast. We will, I and mean, it'll for be for shocked in the Gaelga. It'll be. Oh yeah, when's that? Uh, not not that far off. I think it's spring. I think it's a springtime event. Okay, we might do that in spring. spring Give us time to prepare. Spring anyway, Ben, time. you've sidetracked us with Four a lot of podcasts. Non- <laughs> you've sidetracked us with a, a, an unusual amount of nonsense. What about Ben Affleck, Ben? Um, uh, Daredevil. No. Yes. No. Daredevil is a great film. You're wrong. He's in a bloody. He's in a sensory deprivation tank. There's Evanescence. Bring me to life. No. Uh, there's Jennifer. Beale? No. What's her name? It's not Jennifer Beale. He married her. He did Jennifer... marry her. Jennifer. One of the Jennifers. One, One of the, the Hollywood Gen- Jennifers. Love Hewitt? <laughs> no. <laughs> was that not a joke? Jennifer Garner. I thought that was a Jennifer joke. Jennifer Garner. <laughs> Jennifer Garner. It was Jennifer yeah. Garner. There's a, it there's was Jennifer Garner. A very compelling performance by um, Colin Farrell as Bullseye. Who I never miss. The <laughs> devil made me miss. I quite like... Daredevil and I think for the purposes of this conversation that Daredevil is Ben Affleck's best genre film listen Michael you're tired you've had a long day I'm going to give it to you because I want to move on anyway. <laughs> has I, he been I, in anything I'm going to give it to you has he he's been in loads of stuff he's been in Armageddon but Armageddon, that's a shite film yeah. 
He's been in The Accountant, which was an atrocious... Well, it wasn't bad from a choreographing point of view, but it yeah. wasn't a great story. No, it wasn't It wasn't all that interesting. Um, one of those strange corporate espionage kind of businessmen turned out to be a real bunch of bad eggs. No, he wasn't. He was an assassin. Uh, he was an assassin, but he works in a corporate environment. He's brought in as a forensic accountant for businesses yeah. who want to find out where things go wrong. That was actually not horrible. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. No. He was in Smoking Aces, where he played another assassin. I don't know if that was a... That was a genre piece, though. He was in the masterpiece that is Clerks 2. I, I've only seen that once, despite being... Uh... Terrible. Um, and he was, notably for the podcast, he played George Reeves, the original Superman on television oh, in Hollywood. Of course, Land. that might be his best film. Wasn't bad in Hollywoodland. Yeah. He I played don't... the alcoholic George Reeves. I don't know if that would be... Uh, oh! He was the bomb in Phantoms. I don't know what Phantoms is. <laughs> that is a reference inside a reference inside a reference. That's what Jay from Jay and Silent Bob shouts at Ben Affleck in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. You were the bomb in Phantoms? Yes, because they meet... <laughs> Why are we getting into this? They meet Ben Affleck's character that he played in Clerks. Not Clerks. Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. And he says Affleck was the bomb in Phantoms. And then later when they meet Affleck, they shout that at him. And Phantoms is a science fiction horror film. So let's give it to Phantoms. Okay, best, Phantoms um, wins for sure. Meta credentials. Yeah, very good. Let's move on. So, yeah. how are we doing for time here? You lead. We're fine. We're fine. Yeah, we're fine along. Good. You can keep uh, filming. The next one we're going to do, Ben, uh, we'll do noted character actress Jennifer Lawrence. Very equal opportunities here on the podcast this week, Michael. Yeah. Very ben, balanced list. Yeah, I don't know if things are balanced. If the moment we have a female to talk about, you point out that now it's balanced. Shit. <laughs> you've kind of you've kind of undone yourself I've there. I've sunk a your bit. battleship. Yeah, you have sunk your battleship. My Look, battleship is fine. I pulled the plug out of the bottom of the boat like they do in cartoons, and now we're going down. Yeah, Ben, here's what a film that is definitely not going to be her best film, because we probably never see it. X Men Dark Phoenix. It's not going to come out. Nah. What, what do you think the chances are on that coming out? 70-30 in favour of a no from me. You think it's 70-30 in favour of a uh, no? Look, it's just, they've merged. The, it's the merger, the merger, the merger has happened. The merger. There's a lot of reshoots. The merger. And you just keep repeating the merger there, Benjamin. <laughs> the merger, Michael. There, there are a lot of reshoots. And yeah, I don't think it's going to come out. Yeah, and then there's the merger. Yeah, yeah well done. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I don't, honestly, honest to God, don't think it's going to come out. No. Uh, which is a shame because, well, no, it's not a shame. I, I tell you why. I tell you why. Stop thumping the table. Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, James McAvoy. Yeah. Three best things about it. Everyone else is kind of like, eh. Just a little level below them. Meh. It's just, it's not that. You just don't care about the other characters. Well, Michael well, Fassbender went all method on it a bunch of times mm -hmm. when he loses his family. Spoilers. In Apocalypse. Is it Apocalypse? It's it is Apocalypse. apocalypse. Yeah. He loses his family twice. He loses his bloody, family in first class, then he loses them again in Apocalypse. Bloody heartbreaking. Like, the best scene in the entire film is where he loses the, the kids. Disagree. Okay. Because, um, no, I, I mean, I get your point, but yeah. I thought that that film could have done without that scene. He'd already lost a family. I would have preferred to have seen just Michael Fassbender do Magneto. I would have preferred that Apocalypse had mind controlled some new lesser mutants. Why did it have to be Magneto? Because you needed to have him go against Charles again. I know, but we've done that. We've been there. Yeah, we've we done it a million times. That. Yeah. And his whole Oh lads, I've changed my mind, I'm gonna shoot loads of metal at Apocalypse now. That Oddly doesn't enough, get him back on side. I think the strongest film in that trilogy was Days of Future Past. I also disagree with that. Okay, fair enough. No, but go on, tell us why. I just think in terms of characterization, in terms of interesting plot, in terms of things you care about, there's more going on. It was a nice tie-in, you had Wolverine back, everybody likes Wolverine. I don't, Ben, as you know, yes. I don't like time travel films. You hate time travel films. Because I can't blame you. I, there, there are no satisfying, the only satisfying time travel film is Primer. I've never seen Primer. It's a real boring film. <laughs> <laughs> it's but so it's, boring it's scientifically as accurate as you're gonna get it is and okay. and here's the, great, a very Michael, here's Michael the great thing about kind of it film. it's not a good it's not an enjoyable film you have to watch it multiple times for it to make any sense and oh. even then you're not going to enjoy it it's like a puzzle uh. it's more of a puzzle than a film uh. but look it's a good science fiction it's a good time travel film if I ever write something Ben yes before I write it mm -hmm. I'm going to create the rules of time travel for the universe in my head because that's all I care about, Ben. I don't care about the time travel being being unrealistic. 
I care about it being inconsistent. Michael is channeling his inner Nicolas Cage and Ghost Rider here. He's a boulder <laughs> gonna, media I'm pencil. Gonna take this curse. There's a boulder media pencil pointed directly <laughs> in my face with every syllable uttered. If I stab you with a boulder media pencil, as I threatened to do last week, who gets sued? Me or boulder media? You, because you're the one with harmful intent. Right. But if boulder media wants to make it up to me, they can sponsor the podcast. <laughs> uh, we'll leave a link down below. So, uh, <laughs> I would say, personally, Ben, I could take or leave all of the Hunger Games films. Uh, yeah, sorry, we're back to Jennifer Lawrence now. Yeah. Um, I don't like Jennifer Lawrence. But then, I, I should just say that right now. I can never separate her from her character. To me... But she's just a normal girl. She, just, she likes ice cream and farting. That's what I hate about her. And that's why I think Hollywood hired she, her so much. And I think it's why there's a lull now. She's just like you and in me. In a lot of the stuff that she's in. I hate that you and me crap. She's not just like you and me. She's been a model since she was 16. She's fine. Uh, do you ever get the feeling, Ben? And here's a thought that I have. The people who come across as really personable and normal in interviews, they're probably the weirdest in real life. And the people who are a bit awkward in interviews are probably normal in real life. Yeah, you couldn't because have a point with, with Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. No, she keeps talking about how much she loves farting. No, she just keeps talking about how, how it's so nice to be in a normal place yeah, with normal Yeah, I'm in people. a normal place with normal people and I She's can just that fart whenever I want. Whereas you have a pint with Keanu Reeves and he's talking to you about the Redskins game. Yeah. They still call the Redskins? Probably not. Know, but he's talking to you about whatever the sporting event on the TV is. Yeah. Anyway, this has turned into you hating Jennifer Lawrence. No, no, sorry. I should take that back. There's a, there's a, from a, from a professional point of view, she snubbed me at the Oscars last year and I wasn't happy about that. <laughs> no, um... I don't think she's a very good actress. I think she plays the same character over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, the character who takes a lot of guff and then all of a sudden finds a deep inner strength and it turns out to be just a very aggressive, bulgy kind of inner strength. I don't like it. I don't dig it. And she, she has the same expressions for everything. I thought Passengers was pretty good. Did you? But That surprises me. Really, I just love spaceships. Yeah. But really hated the whole message of it. Of, oh yeah, don't worry, he's kind of... Fucked you over there, but don't. He's the only one around. It's so okay you're... to ruin a woman's lifespan if you eventually convince her that it's all okay. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it should have been called Gaslighting in Space, the movie. Which is theoretically what it was. Um, I didn't see Red Sparrow. I did, Ben. I did a video about it. Was it? You did, Michael. Yeah. You did see it. Well, I've seen your review of it. Yeah. Look, it's fine. It's barely genre anyway. It's, it's, barely it's genre not anyway. great. doesn't pass. Um, Joy was awful. I'd say the best movie she's in is Silver Linings Playbook. I would not disagree with that, but it doesn't fit our doesn't purview. It doesn't fit our purview. So, so it comes down to First Class. Is it not Days of Future Past? I, I think, of I think on Days First of Class Past. is a better film than Days of Future Past. Days of Future Past is there has it has a certain attraction because it's the old mutants and the new mutants and there's a crossover. Yeah. But I cannot forgive it for how little sense it makes yeah. and for how... They've managed to take the fact that they've made a team movie about the bloody Charles Magneto and Mystique again, and then they've shoved in Wolverine. Yeah. And I can't stand that. I think that because of its reliance on a stronger ensemble and setting up a new world, that First Class is a better film. Yeah. Even though Magneto is inexplicably Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mutants! We are here on this beach facing these torpedoes. Interesting lesson. He actually got voice lessons from Conor McGregor for that scene. No, he didn't. <laughs> That's some bullshit there, Ben. Interesting, interesting fact. Yeah. Conor McGregor actually watches that movie every night before he goes to bed, and that's how he makes his speeches. That is also not true, Ben. I think we're going to wrap it up there, Ben. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Who's next on the list there? Um, um, we'll do one more. We'll do Uno Mas. Uh, Sam Rockwell let's do Sam Rockwell, Sam Rockwell cause yeah. there's there's a man that we both agree mm -hmm. great character actor yeah great in pretty much anything he's put in he is undoubtedly the highlight of Iron Man 2 undoubtedly mm -hmm. I was going to say that myself Michael yeah. uh, in one of my favourite space movies of all time Moon oh Moon the spiritual successor to bloody 2001 A Space Odyssey if ever there was one. Oh, is that how you... I think it's a much better film than 2001 A Space Odyssey. Get the fuck in, Michael. This is going to be a fist bump. Fist bump. Yes, that's, yeah, I didn't want to say it in case it rocked the boat, but yeah, I'm right there with you, buddy. It's, um, it's, a, it's a hell of a lot of... It's a more satisfying film than 2001 much A Space more. Odyssey. First thing I ever saw him in was Confessions of a Serial Killer. Or Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Not Confessions of a Serial Killer. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, which was a great film. Is that in our purview, though? Uh... Not really. He was in the somewhat disappointing uh, 
Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, he played the the president of Beeblebrox. Is that his name? Yeah, but he wasn't. He wasn't great in that. He was. He was great in that. But the movie itself was quite disappointing. But you could like you could say that about a lot of things he's uh, he's been in that he is great in it, but it is disappointing. I I know I know what I've picked here. Do you have a choice yet? I don't have a particular choice, but if it, if it was it, if it was down to me, Michael, I'd probably have to go with, with Moon. Moon. You see, there's one rival to Moon. Go on. Which it's easy to, as we said at the start, it does he, the the person we're talking about doesn't have to be the the main role in it. Yeah, no. He just um, has to be in the film. He just has to be in the film. Yeah. And I think it's hard to argue with uh, Galaxy Quest. I don't know what Galaxy Quest you is. You don't know what Galaxy Quest is? No, don't think so. Galaxy Quest. What? Oh, that was the Tim Allen thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The Tim Next Generation piss take. Uh, yeah, I the piss take of the actors of Next Generation. The piss take of the original series more. The Shatner? Than, oh, the yeah. Shatners. It, it, it had more of a the Star Trek to Next Generation aesthetic. But uh, Tim Allen's character, I can't remember his name. Was he the red shirt? No, not Tim Allen's character. Sorry, I just completely lost it. It's Jason Newsmith is the name of the character. <laughs> well done, well done there on IMDb. Sam Rockwell played the kid. He when when the original show was on, he was the youngster. So he was Wesley kind of Crusher, him. yeah, basically. And then they all kind of hate him. But that's a great film. So Sam Rockwell, although actually not Moon's better. Moon's, <laughs> Moon's a great film. You can't argue with Moon. So it's good that we got him in there. We gave him a fair shake, but I'd say Moon is better. Moon is probably his best film. Yeah. Although, would you say that that blind Blade Runner film is his best film? What was that called? Blind Blade Runner? Deaf Blade Runner. Remember it? With Alexander Skarsgård on Netflix? Oh, was Mute. Mute Deaf yeah, Runner. Wasn't. <laughs> no, he was, uh, Mute was a shocking film. We yeah. covered this. But it had Sam Rockwell in it. He's not in it for very... No. Ah, gotcha, because remember the rules? Uh, but Mute was also a shockingly shit film. Mm. Also Duncan Jones, though. We could have done Duncan Jones today. Duncan Jones isn't an actor. Duncan Jones is a director. We could do Best Director of We could film. do Best Director of Films, then but Duncan do... Jones hasn't made as good a film as Moon since he since he made Moon. Source Code is alright. Source Code's alright, but it's no Moon. And That's no Moon. Let me spoil Source Code here, people, so cover your, cover your source old. holes. Terrible time travel ending. Oh no, it's not a time travel ending. No, it's kind of a time travel Michael, ending. you love time travel, don't you? I fucking do love time travel, Ben. <laughs> I love time travel. I think time travel is a great, great conceit. But I hate when they change... Terminator. Terminator can suck an egg. The original Terminator films presented us a closed loop theory. Great. Of time travel. Yes. So the Terminators sent back a Terminator... And the sending back of that Terminator gave the technology to create Skynet. Yes. And then Skynet was created and the Terminator sent back a Terminator. And the sending back of that Terminator gave us the technology to create Skynet. That's not And then the Terminator sent back a Terminator. Yeah. And and I like, if you're doing a a time travel Mm. episode, if you're doing a time travel thing, the closed loop is my personal favorite. Mm. But it's very fatalistic. Yeah, because you can only go one way. Because it it imply it means that things can only happen one way, and yeah. this here it takes away a lot of the hero's um, agency. Looper. The best thing about Looper was uh, when it was over. <laughs> That's a fair point. <laughs> I hated the the thing where you could injure them in the past and it would affect them in the future. Because that's kind of what I mean. It, Looper was a very inconsistent time travel. That's what I mean. Because when you injured someone in the past, it meant that they would automatically become injured in the time paradox that was their future. Surely if you cut someone's leg off in the past, it completely alters their life trajectory based on the thing. There you go, And man. they would always have the missing leg. So I understand why closed loop is your favorite because it is fatalistic and has to keep going. Mm. Whereas if you think, oh, this will be a cool effect. If we cut his nose off in the present, yeah. it means that his future self who now exists in the present will lose his nose all of a sudden. No, that's not what it means. It means you directly alter his thing his future self will actually just vanish yeah now because you've changed the events that would have led him exactly to that exactly I enjoyed that Michael or Ben his future self would have showed up at the start of the film inexplicably with no nose yeah you couldn't you couldn't have had it any other way and then he would have cut it off and he never would have come back because he would have like oh no because because I came back I lost my fucking nose yeah I'm gonna stop but then but then he couldn't have decided to come 
Oh no! Oh no! We'll do a time travel episode. We've created. A, oh, we definitely should do a timey wimey episode. Um, okay, Michael. Do a wrap um, up there. So, do you have any favorite genre actors? No, don't do. That's too general. Ask the people where we write about. Sorry, okay, so who are we write about? Where we write about a, a classic Ben Affleck? Where uh, we write about a J Law? Where we write about a bloody, a bloody, a bloody, a bloody. Thank you. Uh, where we write about a bloody Sam Rockwell? Yeah. Will I ever get my voice track ma- fixed? And will I ever be able to finish wrap up ever again? <laughs> Maybe not. Um, if we miss any, if you completely disagree with us, please mm-hmm. let us know down below. Mm-hmm. If you think. Daredevil was the best thing since sliced bread. You and Mick can go off and be best friends in a pub somewhere, and I'll just leave you to it. We could, we could um, probably just watch Daredevil. You can come up to my house and watch Daredevil. Yeah, you could probably do that, and um, I'll just leave you to it, lads, because yeah. I don't think it's that great a film. It's too too tight on the spandex. It's, it's not great. It's clever. It's you. It's worse. <laughs> um, we are, as always, ladies and gentlemen, on Instagram. We are, as always, on Facebook. Um, and if you have any favorite genre actors from Fergie films, please let us know down below. We're on in the Twitter comments. as well, then. We're on the Twitter as well. To anyone that goes into random local comic book shops and mentions us to people behind counters, thank you very much. Please keep doing that. Um, we're on iTunes. And we're on iTunes. If you could leave us an actual physical, uh, digital review on iTunes, loves on reviews. iTunes. Uh, we'd love that because it does us a favor. God, we're one of those podcasts now. Um, as always, this podcast was not brought to you by Squarespace. Yeah. Or, although, I mean, I wouldn't get too carried away there in case they do want to contact us. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> bye bye. It might be the future. <laughs> what a shit ending. <laughs>